Guys, this video was not initially intended for YouTube. It was a one hour session with my VIP members last night where I went over a trade setup that I gave in advance and I went over specifically why this was your entry and not this, despite market cipher B looking good, kind of, around this area, okay? In addition to that, I build you guys a narrative, a macro narrative, as to why we may see much, much lower prices, okay? Now, I just want to preface by saying, I am by no means saying that we are definitely going to get down here, but it is our job as traders to identify the probabilities and say price can go here and decide what the likelihood of it going down there is and then taking responsible trades, making responsible decisions around the narrative that we built. So if you're having trouble building the narrative as I teach every single day on this channel, this may give you a different perspective on what I'm seeing versus what you're seeing. Last thing I wanna leave you with is as it was a live session, other members in the VIP were speaking and sometimes we did have a little bit of feedback. So I do apologize for some of the audio. It's not much, but some of the audio in the stream. And guys, if you're interested in the VIP, listen, I'm not here to upsell you. I'm not here to show you. The product is here. Consider this a sample for one of the elements that you get within VIP. And, um, you know, you can make a decision as to whether or not you believe it is worth it. We got a great group in there. And something that I take pride on is that this is a network. It's not a community. And we are all like-minded and we are all trying to win. And although we're not all winners quite yet, my job and my responsibility, and I give my word, is to try my best to make you guys all winners. Remember, I teach you guys why the market moves the way that it does. I don't want to just give you the levels because that's not what this group is. I teach you and I'm in there with you, okay? I'm getting my hands dirty with you. So if you're expecting free calls, you get the trades, but you get a lot more than that as well. Enjoy. Okay, so look, I want to go over this trade because yesterday, uh, and I don't mean to like put whoever was in VIP uh on blast here that's not my intention but i do want to go over it because they thought that there was a good trade here and i mean if you were scalping it you know you had half a percent one percent maybe give or take and congratulations if you took that but i want to go over why i wanted lower and like specifically and i don't mean to like put jabs on blast he's not wrong we're all learning but specifically jabs is like yo there's a cheat sheet entry here i want to take it and i'm like yo i don't really know how i feel about that and i just want to go over why okay so the very first thing that we got to do, guys, we say that I say this all the time, man. Identify your range. When you see vectors in the range, we're trading towards the vectors, okay? So right now, we are absolutely printing vector candles within the range, okay? Well, let's talk about how we got in here. The first thing that you need to understand is when you have a red vector candle, okay? That is people, that is market makers market longing. Who's can someone mute your mic who's giving me feedback right now? You mind muting or one of my mods? Can you mute whoever it is? So remember, when we have a key zone, and we're going to go over how I got this box here in just a second. But when we have a key zone, okay, we need to, you need to pay attention to what price is doing as we come into that zone, okay? So whoever took the courses are going to know what I'm about to say, but this is good because you can look at it like in, in real time, or not in real time, but in reverse and and it be practical okay so let's go back in time because i want to talk about this so here we had an order block five minute order block and when you are or was it a three minute order block where is this order block okay three minute order block okay when you are identifying your order blocks by the way we also had a key zone here we had like a blue box if you guys remember i don't have it on the chart because shit got deleted but uh, my blue box was like something like this. It, it, it looked kind of like this. It was a little bit higher than the... Uh, actually, I could probably get you exactly what it was. No, it was, like, it was like a little bit lower. It was like something like this. And it was higher than the order block, but I'm just going to delete it because it's not important for this kind of lesson, kind of mini lesson. So when you're looking for order blocks, whenever you're in a range, you, sh you should be looking for order blocks. And the number one places that you're going to try to find your order blocks is beneath lows, and uh, above highs, okay? We know that, I'm gonna hide this because we don't need it, the fixed range. We know that um, that the market is, is moved by liquidity and only liquidity, okay? There's no other reasons. It's only gonna be liquidity. This is a game of money. The market makers are not here for charity. They are here to attack your liquidity. And what happens is when, for example, there's a nice liquidity curve like this, when I say liquidity curve, for those who didn't take the course and may not understand, 
people that are shorting locally, right? Some people have their stop losses here. Some people have it here. Some people have it here. Some people have it here. And so naturally, when we decide to actually get the move to the upside, why not come and swipe out all of that liquidity? That's an easy move, okay? And just to give you reference in case you're new and you haven't really been around, I've been super fucking bearish, super, super bearish since 38K. And people are like, oh, Gio, you're a dumbass. Oh, well, no one actually says that, but you know, oh, you've been bearish since 38K and we pumped 30% since then, which yes, you, you would be right. Okay, fine. But just like I'm about to show you in that example or in that example here, um, if I draw my liquidity curve to the low, there are a lot of stop losses. Let me pull this up so I can see. There are a lot of stop losses here. There are a lot of stop losses under here, 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 here. And so the day that we end up actually coming down and breaking below this low, I can almost guarantee you that this is just going to be a domino effect and we're going to lose all this. We're going to come down. I'm going to tell you this confidently. We're going to come down this 15% in one week. Honestly, it could be even faster. Yeah. This could be easy. Your, yeah, one, easy. your one day. I always say, yo, in the healthiest bull markets, we got one day, uh, you know, minus 20%. That's stay down. Okay, I'm not talking this bullshit where they jump it, they drop it 10% and then it snaps back up. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking in the healthiest bull market, we have candles that go down and stay the fuck down. Okay, this may be one of them. And then we also have liquidity here. But I just wanted to, to bring that to your attention because that's what's happening lo very locally, but it works on all time frames when we came down to this low. So let's pull up our replay tool again. Let's come back and let's talk about why I was not very happy or not happy, but I, I wasn't really feeling the, sh the long that the boys were saying. Like Jabs is like hitting me up. Yo, we got a cheat sheet entry. And I'm like, yo, I don't really know it. And again, I don't, I don't mean to put Jabs on blast here, but why was I not crazy about it? Number one, this when we came down remember we are here to sweep liquidity we didn't sweep any liquidity okay this wick came down but this wick did not take out this wick okay so this wick effectively didn't do anything didn't really do much you could argue that we took these lows which okay fine but we didn't really get a strong reaction off of it and we're still like midpoint of the range okay so if you, if you dra grab your Fibonacci tool and you just put in your zero line, where the fuck am I? You just put in your zero line, your 100 and your 50, you could see like we're in the midpoint of the range. So are we really going to be looking for SFPs halfway through the range? They could play out, but it's obviously a lot more risky because we're in the middle of the range. Whereas this SFP down here makes a lot more sense or this SFP makes a lot more sense as well. So that's the first thing that we need to pay attention to. While we were coming down here and the 15 looked decent, I mean, at first glance, so I can't blame the VIP members and jabs of, for saying, yo, like this kind of looks like it, it would be a good run, right? We do have the red vector coming into the 50 EMA, the 50 EMA was holding. And remember, we did get a decent move off of it. I wasn't tripping and I'm gonna go over why now. So on the 15, it looked good and Technically, your cheat sheet entry, technically, is once your candle is printed, or once, sorry, once your dot is printed on that time frame. Okay, so you could say that this dot was a cheat sheet entry, and then you would put your stop beneath the last swing low, and you would target a new high, which, I mean, I guess on the 15, maybe you would target this guy. Yeah, probably this guy you would target, okay? Now, the reason I wasn't crazy about it is because, when it, first of all, when it comes to tr uh, cheat sheet entries, I try to front run the green dots, okay? Because if you know in my video, um, no, that's the wrong accounts. If you have seen my, so my last four videos are fire. If you guys haven't seen them, go watch it. I'm not here to show, show you shit, but let me just say. So this, why you're losing with Market Cipher B was the first video that I made kind of in that series. And it basically goes over, if you see the green dot, like you already missed the move, okay? The candle happens, um, uh, or sorry, the green dot is produced as a result of the move that already happened. And yes, it could indicate momentum, but that specific dot already happened. Look at this red dot. This red dot came in already from the top 1%. Okay, so if you see a red dot and you short it, you're already down here, give or take, wherever it might be in that 15-minute candle, wherever you saw it. 
you missed the move. We are trying to front run, essentially, the cheat sheet entry. That's the, 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 I don't want to say more skilled, but the less lazy way to do it. The lazy way is you see it, you long it, you put your stop beneath the low, cool. The sniper way is we're trying to front run it. And how do we front run it? We jump to the lower term time frames, And we remember our order of operations. When we came down here, and Jabs can correct me if I'm wrong, because I was telling them in the VIP, we had a wick. We started to formulate a mini range here. As we formulated a mini range, look at the, look in history. Money flow was thick in the green, and then we started coming into the red. The number one rule is the thicker the money flow, the more chances of divergences. And you could say, Geo, that's not that thick money flow. And I would say, you know, you're not wrong. It's not it's not extremely thick money flow. It's not crazy. It's not like this, but it is the thickest red money flow relative to recent time. And we have an order block beneath us that would give us good confluence to take that low. And so while Jabs and whoever else, and sorry, I, 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 this is the last time I bring up your name. I'm not trying to, anyways. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm not trying to be a dick. I just like heard that back and I'm like, damn. I'm no, like, kind yeah, of I anyway, so no, when, when it was. No, I'm just, I mean, yeah. whatever. So when everyone was like, yo, you know, she, she, entry, she, she, entry, whatever. I'm like, yo, I'm not seeing those the the three tap, and I'm not seeing the divergences that I want to see. Like that shit, you know, is not good for me. And again, you know, they they got to move off of it. But this was the kicker. Okay, I want to show you guys this kicker here. So they got to move. We got to move off of it, right? If you were longing up here, I mean, again, we don't know what's gonna happen necessarily. Like, it could have worked out. It could not work out. We don't know. But here's your kicker on why now i was so sure about this level okay remember what i said the market is designed to run your liquidations the market is designed to attack your liquidity and now all of a sudden we still have this low that was not taken and we're at still the midpoint of the range okay we have that that midpoint that was not or this low that wasn't taken but now look at this look at how ugly these local candles are. And just like I drew that curve, uh, like a little downstairs on Bitcoin here, when that hue at 38K, this is a lot, this is a liquidity curve. Okay. So what happens is retail is stupid and they draw a line and they say, okay, if it comes back to this line, I'm gonna long it. And obviously, like look at how that worked out. But we look at it as there is liquidity here. This is a target for the market maker, okay? The market maker is a a, a a bulldog and this is your stake right here so as soon as i saw this and i saw this and i know that there's another liquid like they could run this liquidity they could run this liquidity this is ugly as shit and we have an untapped order block down here at the lows i'm like okay this is our trade but it's not it's not um it is as simple as that but let me let me just add one more wicked ass confluence to why I was very confident with this move. Now, full disclosure, this happened at 6 a.m. for me, and I was short from up here. So I did not take this long. I'm already long from lower. I did not add to my position, but I did close, um, I think, like 60% of my short here. I went back to bed, and then I woke up basically like I got stopped out at break even, but I made however much I made from it. Like I, I closed a good portion of it. Okay, here is your kicker. Here is your like, yo, this is gold right now. Remember the liquidity curve. We don't just have liquidity to the downside. We also have this liquidity to the upside. So you guys need to pay attention to where, or sorry, to what the market is doing. What are the candles doing? What is the story that is being told as we come down to this order block? And the story right now is we swept these lows. We swept this low. We swept this low. We tapped this order block. They had no intention of breaking down further, which clearly you can see off of the rejection. And we have a nice liquidity line above us. It almost looks like Bitcoin is being forced down here. It's like it doesn't really want to go, but it's just like, uh, and then it like, boom. And then this is a good confluence for the long because this allows, remember, there are, there are dollar signs up here, right? There's liquidity up here. And so just like in that example at 38K, how I was saying it would take one day or two days to wipe all those, same thing here. When we have red vector candles, which are market makers limit longing and retail shorting here, 
into our key zone that just swept li just swept liquidity swept liquidity and we got a strong reaction off of it why can we not easily come back up and take that and if we come on the lower term time frames i haven't checked this okay i haven't checked this but this is why we pay attention to the rule the thicker the money flow the more chances of divergences because here we had thick money flow okay and you know you could say you could argue that you had your one two three tap here right because i mean technically we did we had the one two three but you need to understand context why would we come back down in a move that feels super forced to not sweep liquidity okay what there's a remember guys if there's anything if you didn't hear anything that i just said i need you to hear this the market is moved by money there's nothing else there's no other reason and it costs the market makers money to move price okay i'm gonna say that again it costs the market makers money to move price so if they're sending the price down here it's for a reason it is our job as traders to identify what that reason is. Why the hell would we come all the way back down here? I mean, I say all the way, but we're in a scalp range. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Why would we come down here in what feels like a forced move to not sweep out any lows? If we know that their intention is to wreck your liquidity. If we know that everybody from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, were longing and their stop is beneath this low. Because we are taught as retail to put your stop losses beneath the recent swing low. How did that work out for you? So this was your trade. And everything I just explained was so like, man, it was an easy trade. And then if you came down on the two, again, unfortunately, I was sleeping. It was 6 a.m. But if you come down on the two and you know the thicker the money flow, the more chance of divergences. Here's your three tap. But you're like, ah, I don't know. I mean, why? Uh. You know, like, I don't know about that. Why would we come down here or whatever? And we know that this order block is still untapped. And then, so now at this point in time, if we draw out, oh, whoops. If we draw out and we go, all right, well, thicker the money flow. Yeah, we're getting the green dot, but, you know, I want to see something like this. Get one more divergence. That's what I want to see. And then, I mean, sure enough, obviously that's what happened. And obviously it doesn't always work out. But that's what I would have done in real time. And this is how, guys, I build a narrative every day. And this is how I uh, I tell you guys, like, or, or I give you guys the updates. When we're close to the level, I'm doing all this on the fly in, like, one split second because I've been doing this for a hot minute and I can see all this shit. And I draw out the, the, the divergence and I'm saying that's what I want to see. That's how I do it. Like, so if this was real time right now, I would literally do this. And I would screenshot this and I would add everyone in the VIP. And you don't know why I'm doing that, but I just explained why I'm doing all that. And so this was a very easy trade. Very, very easy. Textbook trade right here. And then obviously, you know, we hit it. You could have put your stop beneath the uh, the order block. I did, I did just move this. I shouldn't have moved it. But nonetheless, this was the trade. Or I actually, I think I have the trade... Uh, did I have the trade in another folder? Oh, no, I didn't because shit got deleted. But anyways, I, and, and there you go. Easy fucking trade. So shout out to XRP that took the trade because that shit, um, I mean, it was textbook, man. It was textbook. And this is what I want you guys to start, to start, uh, I want you guys to start thinking like this. Don't think like retail. Don't. Don't think, oh, I'm going to put my stop beneath the swing low. When you guys enter a trade, your job is to find every single reason why that trade might not work. Not why it works. Finding out why it works is fucking easy. That shit's easy. Why will it not work? That's your money. Drop the mic. I wish you would have uh, recorded that, you know, that little live stream that we did last night because it pretty much did exactly what you said. <clears throat> yeah. I know, I wish I did too, but it's okay. I recorded this one, and so these guys are still going to get some fire. And guys, right there, just for the record, for those who may not know, right there was a condensed, perfect example of basically all the, all the boot camps in one. We got order blocks. We got liquidity. I didn't talk about market structure, but we had market structure pop out of there. So market structure flipped bullishly if you entered that way. We had our market site for B logic, and we also had a key zone down here. 
Yo, is he lagging for anybody else or is it just me? Yeah, lagging well, very, very slightly so, yeah. Was I, was yeah. I lagging the whole time yeah. or just at the end? Yeah, we didn't no, want to interrupt you, bro. No, you, you were lagging for a second. I don't know if it was that much, you guys. Come on. No, it wasn't that much. Yeah, Gio, uh, by the way... I didn't hear the word you said. <laughs> I fucking did. Check, check, check the mod thing I sent you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I just added him back. <laughs> by, by the way, uh, Gio, we all, we all took a vote, and uh, we're very disappointed that you removed the soundboard. Oh. That soundboard was, like, the shit. Man, that meme is, is like, I don't know. You guys need to, like... Cringe? I don't, I don't Cringe? know what that meme was, dude. Have you never seen it? No, no, like I see it all the time, and I think I, I actually literally think that that's the gayest meme of all time. I hate when people put, post that shit. I hate it. I like die inside. I'm like, what are you posting, bro? What are you posting on Instagram? I what? Nothing. God is. Anyways, um, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the recording. I'm gonna stop the recording, and that's fire video right there. I shouldn't even post that because people are gonna share that, but that's fine. Talking about everything else as well. So, this is an example of what I can do if I if I just wait for. The Dude, I'm not the long. That's it. Period. You know, like that's all I gotta say. Thank you, Gio. You, no worries, bro. Listen, trading guys, if you don't have discipline. You're fucked. And You're I'm going to say this. I'm going to tell you this for free. You guys, like, uh, look, I've played the game of, oh, Market Cypher looks good. You know, I shorted from here. Don't get me wrong. I shorted it, which there wasn't, I didn't have a level there. I actually shorted uh, a little bit early, and then I got stopped out, and then I got back in. Fine. But, you know, when the, the real rule is, the disciplined way to do it is you don't trade unless price is in your zone. And if price is not in your zone, then then you just, man, you can't, like, look, let's just say this didn't happen. Because this is an example where it worked out, okay? Maybe there was another example. Look, perfect, perfect, perfect example. Hit when my it, stop loss right below that. Just, I, like, if it didn't work out, it would have hit my stop loss, and guess what? It would have went through. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but look at this. Look, like, this, for example, for the same reason I just explained, like, I was, I don't want to say bearish. I was cautious. Man, money was coming out. We had money flow divergences. We had another thicker the money flow. We waited, we waited, we waited. Like every sign in the book said to said it was gonna go down here. Right? And so the funny thing is that when people say, Oh, you're an idiot, you were bearish at because this I actually get you were bearish at 38k. So of course when we go down there, you're gonna say that you were right. I'm like, dude, listen, I was bearish at 38k, or I was cautious, and we pumped 25k or 25% since then so in no way shape or form was i right but the difference is that my story made fucking sense these people that longed here cannot explain it doesn't make sense you can't tell me why and in the long run you being able to tell me why and building the story whether it plays out or not is going to be the difference of whether you can do this for real or not who has another mic I have no idea because loud as fuck. Fucking... She made a bad. She uh, made a look at Cardano, bro. Gio, um, may you please share the link for uh, for the charts? Somehow I didn't get it. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, bro. Listen, Jabs, what did I tell you like a long time ago? How many days? Like four days ago, five days ago? Where did I tell you Cardano was going? <laughs> 61, I think you said. 30 cents. I think he called 70 cents. No, no, 61. It's, it's yeah, going 61. 61. And then remember, guys, look, I could do, oh, the, same, I could do the same That's shit here. Cardano? Yeah. Look, I could tell you the same shit. Look, based on market structure, 61 cents is the target. If Bitcoin's going to run and alts are going to run and whatever, which it looks like they're going to run, then why, first of all, why would Cardano not? But fine. Let's build a story just based on Cardano alone. We had an SFP of the low. This is our target. If we come up here, why would we not come up and take these highs when these highs did not take this very important high? Why didn't it take this high? It's weird that it didn't. 
And actually, this is a good example of what I was kind of saying with Bitcoin. Remember a couple of days ago, um, when or yesterday when Bitcoin ripped or whatever, I was like, guys, don't be surprised if Bitcoin, you know, gets a nice retracement to like 46, 45K because sometimes they like to fake you out into thinking like there's a double top like this. Double top meaning here's one and here's two, not not one and two, okay? And because, but like, remember, it costs them money to move the market and why wouldn't they come and take that liquidity? So whenever you see this, usually they come back for it. So now my target is not, if I was long on Cardano, which I'm not, my target is not just 61 because it makes sense for them to come to these highs because these highs didn't take out this high. So really my target is here. But now, if my target is up here, why would they not recover this vector candle that they haven't recovered before? There's an inefficiency here. Why would they not recover it? And if you wanted to get super technical, which we don't need to because we use vector candles, but you also have a fair value gap right here. So why on earth would we SFP and reject from this fair value gap? We wouldn't. We would rip it through, which gives us more confluence with our order block up here we have a three day and we have an 18 hour order block we probably have smaller order blocks in here as well but this is how you can build your target so this makes sense if we take it now we're going to come to the sfp we got inefficiency in between and the vector candle we're headed towards here 76 and that's why i said to jab's dad that shit's going to 75 76 or 71 at the very least 69 in my opinion this is why so this is how you could mention so it's a story. It is a story. Market makers cannot hide their intention. They make the move, the move is printed, and we all have the same data. You guys have the same data I have, but my job is to help you see what you're not seeing now, what retail doesn't see. What would the low be for Cardano? Um I mean Honestly, I don't know. Um, you pull a fib. That gets you an idea, right? Like mm. if if you hit those uh, that target that you're talking about. Man, the thing about fibs is like more often than not, whenever you have a fib, higher, 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 because you have those. You're not gonna tiptoe into those points. You're gonna fucking step into those uh, order blocks, right at the top. Oh yeah, yeah. So true, true, true. Let's maybe just say, let's maybe just say mid point of that. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I like I would say watch for this. I would say watch for th for forty. Pay attention to forty. That's what I would say. Watch for because we got. Uh, well, this is not an SFP anymore. I would say maybe SFPing this low. I, honestly, bro, I don't know, and I'll tell you why because I don't know how low Bitcoin's gonna go. Like. It depends on how low Bitcoin goes, because I'll tell you this. Some people's predictions, like Alex O'Crypto, his uh, Bitcoin low prediction is 35K or 36K or whatever he said. My prediction was like 24K, okay? And the reason, very simple, right? When we break this, we have all this liquidity to break. When we break this liquidity, we have this vector candle to recover. When we recover that vector candle, we have this liquidity to sweep. <laughs> and then this wick was an inconsistent wick on all exchanges okay mm -hmm. so yeah. when they have inconsistent wicks they usually make a run for it so already by default that's at so that's at 24k can they go lower than that hell yeah why can't they come and recover these vectors they can which would give me good confluence with my 24k idea would they come and take this low well we got vectors down here so why the fuck wouldn't they and then if they decide to come and grab these vectors we got liquidity down here so why wouldn't they come down to here? And if we're going to come down to here, why wouldn't we just might as well take the low? Zero. So some people Four, are... That's 14, 15, you're saying maybe? I'm like, say, like that's listen, a possibility? I'm, this is what I'm saying. Everything is... Anything is possible. Okay, I'm going to show you guys this. And if this guy's in here, I apologize. I don't mean to blast you, but I blasted jabs earlier. So let me just say this. Somebody commented... Somebody commented on my somebody Twitter the other day. Like this shit, man, people are bullish, bro. Max Payne is up. Is it though? Is Max Payne up? Well, look, somebody commented. Where is it? They're like. What did they say? 
No way we were going to 30K right yeah. down there below it. Oh, yeah, right here, right here. Same dude, okay? Same dude, this guy. Okay, if you're here, I'm sorry. I don't mean to do this, but I'm like, what comes first, 30K or 69K? This mentality of no way we're going here, you cannot have that mentality. I don't want to hear no way this, no way that. You can't have that mentality. You have to be objective. There are vectors here, okay? Now, let's play devil's advocate for the, for the uh, other side as well. We also have vectors at 11K. We have vectors down at $3,000. Does that mean that we're going to come to 3,000? I don't know. Okay, I don't know if we are. If we're going to come and recover this vector, I would say it's very unlikely. But can we? Yeah, we can. We definitely can. We can't say... No, you can't say we're not going to. You can't say we're not going to. You definitely can. Yeah, anything can happen. I remember hey. gold in 2011, I guess. When it was spiking like four hundred dollars uh, in a minute, back and forth, and like people were like really crazy surprised. Like if that can happen, yeah. And so and, gold, I, and, I, and I saw it. Happen with gold, it was, imagine what could happen with Bitcoin. Like anything, bro. Anything. That's what I'm saying. Like there's no, you can't look. I'm not saying that it's gonna get down there, but I'm saying you can't, you cannot ignore the idea that it that it can get up there. It's very possible. It's very Just possible. like here, it's very possible for Bitcoin to rip up to 57. It could hit 57 before it does that. Okay, well, if it comes to 57, why wouldn't they come and take these highs? Okay, well, if they come and take these highs, why wouldn't they come and take this vector candle? Right? And here's an untapped, here's an unmitigated order block right here on the daily. Is it, un is it unmitigated? Okay, ever so slightly. But this is an unmitigated order block. So right now, why couldn't they come up to 63K to 66K before dumping it down? Well, they could. They definitely could. I can't say they can't because you're building the story. But the problem with the fucking internet is everybody's stupid. And especially when it comes to the bullet, like the bulls, the bulls specifically, it's like they get offended when you say price can go down. It's like you're attacking their mother or something. And they're like defending it. To, like to the fucking grave it makes no sense and this is why and i say this all the time this is why short money feels so much better than long money because short the people that short the bears are just like okay price is going down cool i'm making money but the when when price is pumping the bulls are like like that guy how's your shorts doing bro like they like want harm on you and anyways but so to answer the cardano question i know we we had a tangent there but to answer the cardano question um I don't know how low Cardano will go because as I just showed you on Bitcoin, we don't know how low Bitcoin can go. And if Bitcoin does come down to like 24K, like I'm suggesting it possibly might. Remember, my prediction was like 24814 or something. Mm -hmm. If we get down there, your alts are going to bleed, guys, bleed. Dominance is relatively high compared to where it was in the, in the lows of the bear market. Because we don't know if we're in a bear market right now. So here we know definitely we were in a bear market. Like definitively we were. But right now we don't know if we are or not. We don't know. And so relative to the bear market, dominance was up. Which means, or dominance is up rather. Which means your alts are going to fucking bleed. And if Bitcoin dumps, guys, if Bitcoin dumps, I can already tell you, I see an SFP of the low here. This is your target for dominance. If dominant, if this gets hit, why wouldn't they recover this vector candle and take this high? If this high gets hit, why wouldn't they come up and recover all of this? I'm speaking of dominance like you can trade it, which you can't, but at least not to my knowledge. But this is what I would call liquid liquidity. The same concepts apply. You could trade anything. You could trade fucking grass if there was a chart on it, okay? So why wouldn't they come up here? And so if Bitcoin is dumping, hear me out. If Bitcoin is dumping and dominance is rising, your, which typically is what happens. Dominance, when Bitcoin dumps, dominance does, usually doesn't dump with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin is dumping, dominance rises. When that happens, when we make it up to here, 70%, 80%, 75%, and if Bitcoin is, is dumping, your alts are going to die. They are going to have another 80, 85, 90% move to the downside from here, which we're already, as of now, let's say 
from the from the hot or whatever. Like each coin is different, but let's just use Do Doge as an example. Like give or take, okay, give or take. Doge is down 88% from where we were. At the low of it, let's just say 92%, fine. Your alts can bleed another, I don't know if, it, I honestly don't know if it's going to go another 80% or whatever, but let's just say another 50%. Like, don't think that your alts can't make new lows. Don't think Bitcoin can't make new lows because it absolutely can. And this is why I'm saying people Yo, are too bullish, yeah. What do you need to see as far like to confirm that you're finally in a bull run? For well, okay, as so, a confirmation. So for me, like, is there set rules or is it just that everybody has to? No, no, on? no. There's no set rules. Okay, I'll tell you this: if Bitcoin takes the high, we're in a bull run, in my opinion. Okay. It's it's really opinion opinion based. If Bitcoin takes the high, we are in a bull run. But I want to I want to bring your attention to um to the last bull run, which why. Don't I have that information here? You're on Bybit. You should uh, go to... You know, here's, to here's, on Binance. here's Binance now. When, when was the last bull? The bull run started in 2020, right? Yeah. So yeah. when we had our bear market, where was the bear? Why don't I... Man. I you got to go to uh, Bitstamp. So previous bull market, okay, our 2017, um, and then this was your your COVID dump, whatever. Okay, so this was the bull market. So this was here. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me just put lines so that we know where we are. Um, that was your the low. That was your bear market. That's kind of where we are now. And then, okay, so look at this, right? Watch this. I'm actually going to open up a new tab so that I can flip back and forth very easily. I don't like splitting my, my charts. It's really annoying. Okay. So look, we're going to go on the daily, and here we're going to go on the daily. So we're on the same time frame, and we're looking at the same thing. Okay? Let me um, get rid of that. Let's go on Bitstamp. So it's all... Oh, wow. Look at that. I forgot that I drew this. That's crazy. <laughs> I deleted that all that shit in there, so maybe it isn't correlating with you. Well, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, look, projected November. I even wrote that shit down. Bro, this is going to be a fire ass fucking if this works out. Anyways, I'm not going to delete that. That's staying for sure. So look, we had the bull market. Okay, very clear. Bull market. Very clear. Bull market. This is this okay then we had the bear market bear market very clear let me switch to a highlighter okay bear market bear market we had the dump in the bear market here was the dump in the bear market okay then we have the bear market rally which could be this the bear market rally yep. then we had our Absolutely. consolidation slash uh what is it called black swan event and then we were off to the races, okay? Now just remember, on this side, everything is inflated. Like look how much smaller it is because Bitcoin's a higher price. But let's look statistically at where we topped out, what happened from the high and, and how low did we go after that? So we had our, bull, our, our bear market and then we ended up, um, I think we came to the 618, right? I think that's, okay, yeah. So we came in between yeah. the 618 and the 786, right? But from this, like we were only give or take 40%, we'll say from the high, if we go up to down. So let's go, let's go, uh, or sorry, uh, let's go up to down. We are about minus 29%, minus 30%, we'll call it, from the high, okay? Minus 30% from the high at the bear market rally, which we know that was a bear market rally because that's his, like in history. Where we are currently is... Obviously, the numbers are not going to be the same, guys, but we are at around that same area, okay? We're around that golden pocket 786 area at the high here. And if history is going to repeat itself, this makes sense for the rejection to come. Fine, okay? We had the bull market. We had the, 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 uh, the bear market rally, which is where we are now. How far from the bear market rally did we fall down? Okay. 
From there, we fell 71%. Now, listen, this was COVID. This was a black swan event, whatever, right? But at the most bullish times is where your black swan events take place. And I mean, look at all the liquidity that they swept, right? They came and recovered this vector candle. And not only that, what, are, what do I teach you guys even today? When you have, the, you have the vector and then we had a line of liquidity, where did this wick come down to? It actually did come down and it swept, not all of it, but it did come and sweep these lows as well. And it swept this guy. Okay, so it swept liquidity. How high did we, or how low did we say from the high? 71% was it? 70. We have a vector down at 20 something too. Yeah. And below. Uh, I mean, a lot. Wait, where, it was this one, right? It was from here to here. Okay, 62%. Was that, am I looking at the right? Oh, no, I lied. I lied from here, from this high. Okay. So from the bear market high yeah. to here, it was 71%. Okay. Now, if we're just playing based on history, 71% down. Is 14K. Now, before you freak out, it makes sense, right? I already showed you guys the vectors. I already showed you the liquidity. Vectors, liquidity, vectors, liquidity, fine. Does it have to go to that low? No, it does not. Does it make sense to go that low? Yes, it does. And let me explain why. One more thing. I guess I guess when I say don't freak out, this is exactly going to make you freak out. But anyways, my job is to be objective and not be like stupid retail that thinks it's just going up only. We have the vector candles down here. We have the liquidity beneath this. We have the liquidity beneath this. This level at 15K didn't bounce off of anything everybody and their mother was waiting for 13k and we never hit that 13k what if we get the 13k now and it just completely destroys everyone that's been so bullish with good reason i mean it's been up for the past year and a half basically non-stop right like with no real retrace i mean we've had retracements but the retracements never lasted a significant amount of time. You know, it didn't really like, we didn't really get this. Like, remember, this is a bull market, guys. In the bull market, we have minus 50% months, a couple months, let's just say. And we stayed the fuck down here. Where do you see that happening here? Sure, this was a... Sh uh a, a, a slow bleed. This wasn't really a slow bleed. I mean, we were kind of still trending up in that. Fine, you could argue that. Here we dumped and just shot straight back up. We're like, nope, peace out. And especially as of late. Remember. Remember. This is the longest since Bitcoin's... Since, since, since 2011. This is the longest Bitcoin has not had a 25% or greater correction. This correction here is 21%. Since, since Bitcoin was like $3 in 2011, Bitcoin has not, not had a 25% or greater correction. That's all I'm going to say. Could you imagine riding the short down? To 13k well we're not here. we're not gonna <laughs> imagine it because we are we are going to we're gonna hit that shit hell yeah we're gonna hit it that's and i'm, I'm gonna saying. i'm that, gonna blow listen insane. i'm telling you guys from right now okay because look we're gonna have a lot of time it's gonna take a lot of time to get there probably if it's time to short your fucking whole house I am going to blow up the VIP. You guys are going to like hate me. I'm going to send, I'm not even joking, 600 at everyone's. I'm going to get all my mods to at everyone 600 times. Like your shit is going to crash because of how many times I'm adding you guys. And if you guys want to get mad at me, fine. You'll get over it. But let's make a fucking bag. Dumpy. That's what I've been telling Jabs and everybody in the for the last couple of weeks he keeps asking me tell me about history tell me about history and you said it exactly the way i've been saying it the last couple of weeks it's possible that it could go back up past 49k 49 whatever but i don't see it happening it never has done that since 
and you just showed it to everybody right now. It's never done that before. Yeah. Dump it. Dump it. <laughs> Dump it. I mean, sure. yeah, man. So we're we're gonna play every range, and at the first sign of weakness, yo, we are going to short. This is gonna be a Shiron short. We're all gonna well, get Bugattis after this. Because what people are, are those, too you know? bullish. What am I looking for? I'm look okay, mainly uh, good dibs on the daily or no. We have it on the daily already. No, no, no. In no. a different like, indicator. No, like another wave kind no, of thing? No, or? no, no, no. In different indicators. Explain. It's nasty. That yeah. picture that I showed a couple hours ago with the MACD and the RSI, it's fucking terrible. Okay, let me daily. explain. Let me explain what we're looking at. First of all, and we're gonna be objective. So I might actually post this on YouTube, not the, the trade idea that we did or like the trade recap, but this because this is pretty good. We had an SFP, a confirmed SFP, okay? Technically speaking, confirming the SFP technically means this is a protected high, which means we shouldn't take it again. And your target, believe it or not, I mean, this is a monthly SFP as well. Let me just add, it is a monthly SFP. So here is your target. The low is your target for the monthly SFP. Now. Our monthly SFP is always going to work out. Does that mean that we can't wick it again and SFP it again? Not exactly. Not quite. Like, those are really big time frames, and we can't bank on just that. But, um, you know, that is absolutely an SFP. Now, what am I looking for? Ask Matt. Well, we, for us to be for sure, for sure, we got to be paying attention to market structure. Okay, market structure on the daily, as we know, as I've been saying forever and ever, market structure on the daily has flipped bearish. Okay, so yes. we should be expecting a lower high to then make a lower low. And I believe it was Kenny that was saying this high has never been taken in history. Okay, so yeah. never, 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 ever. So if we are going to respect this high, which is also in line with our monthly SFP here, really the answer is we we're, we are, to be more certain, we are expecting, where's my uh, thing? We're expecting market structure to, to remain bearish. And so right now, this is your daily low and this is your daily high, okay? So this, everything else in terms of the daily is internal. Everything here is internal, okay? Yeah. But are we going to wait for 38K to say that we're bearish? No, because we are smarter than that. What can we do now? How can we figure it out now? Well, we could follow four-hour structure. What is four-hour structure currently? We had up, we flipped bullishly there, okay? Down, up, down, up, down, broke over here, and so straight up. So your four-hour low, technically, as shitty as, as uh, it looks right now, your four-hour low is this guy, okay? So are we going to wait for 42K for, for, to get mega bearish? Well, no, because that's kind of ridiculous. You play the same game on the hourly. Okay, you can do the same thing on the hourly. What do we have here on the hourly? I mean, unless we take the high again, here is your hourly low, and then here is your hourly high. Actually, I lied. This is your hourly low right here. This guy is your hourly low, and this is your hourly high. Everything else is internal. Fine. Are we going to wait for 46K? No. Why don't we just follow the 15? Sure. Right? Why not follow the 15? Well, at this point, because we didn't sweep the high again, which kind of sucks. I wish we did because structure would be way easier for us if it did. Didn't we on that wick? Didn't no, we on that no, wick a few no. candles ago up on that? This guy? One, two, three. Maybe, yeah, maybe check Coinbase. Way. No. I, I, I will look at other I'll look at other ones, but as of right now on Bitstamp, it did not. So it kind of makes structure like not great. But now you know that this is your 15 minute low. So now things are starting to look a little bit better because we're only, give or take, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars away from from making bare structure. So now what happens? What if we come down? Okay, we take we recover this vector, maybe we sweep this low. Okay, so what if we SFP this low down to here? Then we come up, we come back up and tap this order block. Obviously, I don't have any more data right now to, to analyze, but let's just say that something like that happened. Well, at this point, the 15-minute flips bearish. 
And then when we come back up, if we hit this order block, this is where we can short it, expecting this to be our low because of expectational order flow. Then we send the price down to the one hour low. If we close below the one hour low, then expectational order flow is to, we just made a lower low. Look at how easy this is to run. Okay, I just been talking for the last hour on this, so I'm not gonna repeat it. You should know, look how easy it is for, for it, us to run it. So if the one hour now comes down, closes below, comes back up, we can look to short again here, send that bitch down, easily wipe all that out, and then come and attack, oh my, what am I doing? And then come and attack the four hour low. If the four hour low goes, same thing, we can expect the retracement, giga short here again, run this daily low. And if the daily low, once again, well, I mean, the daily is bearish anyways. So truly, we should be looking to short overlooking to long based on market structure i'm not saying you know for the haters okay, that so are going to say later your your, pl your plan to make a, uh, an extremely large short is to short it in three or four not multiple instances well it's not necessarily it's, necess it's not necessarily it's not necessarily sorry it's not necessarily that it is me being able to identify that the daily is bearish despite what market cipher looks like despite what everyone is saying and all these thumbnails are saying is 100k it is saying that the daily is bearish. Historically, we're at the we're at the high here. Historically, this high has not been taken. I'm not saying it's not going to get taken, but it is being able to identify where we are in the cycle and it is being able to identify daily structure. When four-hour structure flips, it confirms that the daily is going to be respected, right? And trying to find an entry that will, um, I guess, complement the idea of this being the high. And well, I'm, I'm, and whether or not okay, we I'm, add to the position is we could like why not why wouldn't you add to it if yeah. you know but nonetheless we identify where we are. Okay, and what's your plan? And if we do end up breaking this and not SFPing, uh, let's just say it goes to a random number like fifty-two, uh, but then it decides to turn around. Well, then we would have to reanalyze because right now the daily is is bearish. The daily yeah. time frame is bearish, but as soon as we do that and we close above here, then the daily becomes bullish. So we yeah, got to exactly. see. But the thing that you need to understand at that point is we're playing really, really macro uh, time frames at that point because the weekly is still a confirmed SFP here, right? Still a confirmed SFP this weekly. And then yeah. to go even further, this could be a monthly SFP. So we could have a whole, like all of February, Shit's playing with our hearts. You know, we come up here, tag these other these other large order blocks that I have on my on my real chart. Right? If I pull these order oh, blocks okay, and stuff, okay, okay. we could come up, tag this, tag this, but then but then, you know, two weeks I after that, we come down to here and we flip, let's just say, because daily structure would look like this. Let's just say daily structure flips bearish, and then we close below that SFP. Like that's curtains. Goodbye. See you later. If we get a you get a monthly SFP. Right here's your monthly SFP. Here's your target, guys. Good night. See you. See you at. See you at 10k. And listen, yeah. I hope it happens because people are too bullish, man. People are way too bullish. That's all I gotta say. You're a bear. You're a bear. People are like, oh, bear, you're bearish. Bear. Oh, it, like I mean, it would make sense to uh, oh the daily structure. Uh, sorry, the like you said, you're gonna start at the 15. You're short. Then you see the 30 confirms. You short a bit more. And the hour confirms bearish. You confirm. You add a bit more. Four hour. hour yeah, man. Hour. I mean, you can add to your positions. You don't need to have the P and Ls that say, "Oh, you shorted from forty eight two yeah, one yeah. zero. Like you get more money from shorting, not a th like you get more money shorting retests and shit than you do getting it like getting it down with market cipher. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is kind of shitty because the f the five minute low even right now is this guy. So when we start to lose this guy, then we can talk about finding like solid shorts that we can take. But unfortunately, because we didn't take the high, remember there's two ways to enter. One is market structure, one is market cipher. If you don't get in on market cipher, which is the aggressive approach, then you have to get in on market structure, which means you gotta wait for a structure to break and then you gotta wait for like retests and whatever else. So, I mean, let's see right now if Bitcoin decides to bounce off of this order block Right, this is absolutely an order block. Let's see if it bounces off of this and then takes the high again. Remember, what's the number one rule? The thicker the money flow, the more chance of divergences. 
Well, we got thick money flow here on the five. We probably have a cheat sheet entry coming up soon if we get our nice red vector candle down right now. And I don't see any divergences at the highs here. Do you? So maybe we come up and take the high one more time. Maybe we come up and take the macro high and we SFP it. I don't know. But I am just presenting the information that is in front of my face. Sounds good. <clears throat> All right. Was that enough uh, VIP for you guys right there? No. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Y'all are whack. Well, you missed it all, bro. It's all right. We missed the, the fucking trade. The hour. We missed this shit. I know. I was watching it as you were talking. I was like, we're missing the trade right now. We're missing the trade. We're missing the fucking trade right now. Yeah, we goofed. It's over. I'm going long. Isn't like, I'm just kidding. If it took the high right there, that would be like a dirty fucking div, no? Yeah, it would like be, it would have been it would have been sick if it took the high, which is unfortunate that it didn't take the high. I probably wouldn't have taken this trade anyways because it didn't take the high. This should have taken this. There's no reason for it to not have taken that. Like literally no reason at all. Let's see if it took it on other exchanges. So uh, Bybit did not, Binance did not, Coinbase did not. Damn. No, they were all lower. They did not. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But, I mean, that's just the game, man. You're not always gonna... Damn, I wish this wasn't a lesson and we actually took that. That would've been sick. I didn't want to say anything. Man, I, I was, like, not paying attention. You should've, but it's okay. I mean, shit happens. And we're still gonna get in. Like, don't, don't... No need to. Yeah, because uh, that could have been the old, that could have been the most recent high before we go down to 15k. I mean, yeah. I was looking at it going, this could be it. Yeah, literally. This could be mm -hmm. end. Like literally, it could that be it. literally. Man, shouts out to Kenny. Man, Kenny gets it. Kenny's a fucking G. I don't care what anyone says. Bro, I know he's sitting at home in his computer chair with his loafers on. His golf bag is next to his desk. And he's watching charts all day. And he gets it. Okay, I'm gonna stop the stream. YouTube, if I post this to you, you're welcome for the sauce. I'll see you guys on the next stream.